What is up, YouTube? I'm back again with another video. Boy, this has been quite a week. Um, I feel like I haven't actually got anything done that I actually wanted to. But, uh, so I've been trying to film this for like three days now. And last night we had a grass fire. It turned out to be 900 hay bales caught on fire. And a lot of the agencies were kind of like just like switching out um, for like who has to like babysit it because it's still burning, uh, just very slow. Um, and I was out there for about eight hours throughout the night and then slept during the day when I wanted to film this. And yeah, so here I am, I'm finally filming it. This is August 12th, 2020, everything in my military collection. As I always like to start off with, I'll show you guys how I usually store all this stuff, and that's in these giant uh, eight or the flyers kit bags is what I prefer to use. And then I also have like a whole bunch of duffel bags. An old Air Force One, uh, two from the, this one's from 79, this one's from 78, this one's from 52, and then both of these are the early nylon style 60s ones. That's an Air Force One from the early 60s, late 50s. Modern one. And then moving up to field gear. I have my near mint first pattern M56 set. Everything on this set is first pattern. And then I have my early USMC Vietnam War era field gear set. Now I am using a large M56 pistol belt, but I do have an actual M61 belt. And there's just a single M14 mag pouch. And then I got my near complete M67 set with the plastic snap and small snap. Sadly, no uh, no M67 butt pack yet. And then down here is all my extra NOM era gear. So I have three complete set of H suspenders, um, all second pattern. I got second pattern regular, second pattern long, and second pattern extra long. And then second pattern canteen, three second pattern canteen covers, two second pattern ammo pouches, a first pattern M56 belt, and then an E-tool cover, 1911 ammo pouch, first aid pouch, M67 canteen set, Korean War first aid pouch, early pattern canteen pouch, um, the uh, spaghetti straps for the sleeping bag carrier, and then the butt pack adapter straps. Two M61 butt packs. This is my very first one, my very first M61 I ever owned. And then that one is unissued. Um, a uh, first pattern M56 butt pack, and then just the 70s general first aid kit, and then two M67 canteen covers. This one has plastic snaps. This one is the metal snaps. And then moving away from the 70s era gear, well. Sort of. This is my complete Alice set of 70s Alice gear. Everything on this set is uh, 70s dated. Even the canteen cup and the canteen and the first aid pouch and the first aid dressing. Um, but this is my very first set of pistol belt and Y suspenders ever that I ever owned. And then moving down from that, I have the Desert Tan set. Not all this on here is original, like the six color desert compass first aid pouch, the E-tool cover, that pouch, um, or that ammo pouch. And then I got the two quart Desert Tan canteen with the cover. And then moving down from that, oh, I do have my LBV, and then it's just stuffed inside a butt pack. And then the, Later on, 90s, mid to late 90s, 
quick release style buckle. Here's all my spare butt packs. These two are the 70s training ones. Well, you really can't see the stamp that good on either of them. But they're both from the 70s. And then I got this unissued 86 dated butt pack. And then here's my modern uh, Rothko one. And then I just have an Arctic one quart canteen cover there. And then I have some extra canteen sets. And then some extra general first aid kits and then compass first aid pouch. And then I have the M3 first aid bag with some contents and then a complete uh, soft cased general first aid kit and then a aeronautical first aid kit. So that covers all my field gear from Vietnam to the late 60s through the 70s and then into the 90s and then some of the early 2000s and then I'll go ahead and go walk over here to body armor. So here's the 1950s flak curtain. Here's my 50s flak jacket. Here's my first pattern M55 flak jacket, size extra large. And then to coincide with that, here would be my 50s extra large M1952A. And then second pattern M55, size large from 1967, so it's first year production. And then down here, 69 contracted large uh, body armor vest with the three-fourths collar. I do have two of these. Um, I just don't have the, the second one down here. I also have two, or a second, uh, second, second pattern M55, but it's not down here either. And then the third pattern M55, size large. Doesn't look like it in the camera, but in person it's actually very, very green light green um, and then I have the variable body armor complete well it's missing the manual but it has both plates and then I have my extra large black M55 this oddball and then moving into the 80s so you had Army era and then US Marine Corps era and now the same era so 80s uh, Pazgat vest. This is my extra large one from the early 80s. I took a three color desert cover and then dyed it black and threw it on there just for shits and giggles. The second pattern Pazgat. This one is size large with the six color desert cover. This is actually my very first flak jacket that I've ever owned. And then down here I have my early 90s Desert Storm era uh, uh, body armor vest and then I got or well that's the combat vehicle crewman one and then I also have my uh, my uh, interceptor vest size extra large um, just missing the shoulder protectors and then I have the large three color desert one again just missing the shoulder protectors but it does have the groin protector and then the, the yoke. And then over here to the rucksacks. Basically I got the, um, got some generic World War II pack. And then my M41 field pack, the pack board, the lightweight rucksack with welded frame the P66 frame, I think, um, with the Vietnam era two quart canteen cover on there, rubberized, unissued lightweight bag, uh, my nylon P41, my tropical rucksack. So you covered all the, from the 40s all the way up to the 60s for my collection, and now into the 70s, a unissued 75 dated medium pack, 
the 70s dated large Alice pack, then an 80s medium Alice pack, my Saudi and Arabian Army uh, medium Alice pack, um, three LC1 frames complete, and then my 1988 dated Woodland Alice pack size medium, and then the CF90 pack. And then I also have the early 2000s um, medium Alice pack and large Alice pack. And then this one has those upgraded thicker straps. Moving down here to my helmets. I got the M1 helmet, or three M1 helmets. Uh, one with the Repro Vietnam cover. Um, both styles of face shields. There's a third one that I'm missing. This one has a ERDL helmet cover. This one has six color desert. This one's a Vietnam uh, CVC helmet. And then spare covers. There's some more that's not down here. Just a random pair of jungle boots. Um, this is a proximity hood, a military firefighting hood. And then a Pazgat, six color desert. And then a Pazgat with a three color desert. This is my jumpers or my parachutist configuration one all the padding and straps and then the US Marine Corps lightweight helmet with the uh, Pazgat right, right control face shield cover and then my ACH size extra large and then my CBC helmet from the 90s and then a shoulder holster and then down here I got um, the pilot survival vest almost complete move over here to my military police stuff this is the majority of it not all of it got Air Force holsters people say that the Air Force never used the 1911 but they actually did this one is actually from I want to say 1950 yeah 1950 unissued both styles of suicide straps side handle baton or nightstick Two military batons and then one Rothko one. Air Force ammo pouch, Army ammo pouch. This one's from 61. Air Force baton holder, Army baton holder, 80s or 70s and 80s military or security police duty belt set. Army 1911 pouch, uh, unissued, no dated, not no not dated, um, and then two Air Force first aid pouches and then one Army. This one's from 87 unissued. This one's from 63 unissued. This one is from 50 used with a tear in the leather somewhere. Two uh, Army baton holders, Army handcuff case, Army suicide strap piece, and then another shoulder strap. I'll try and get these automatic lights to come on in here. There's one. Probably not gonna get the second one, I guess. Maybe. Oh, oh there we go. All right, so here's where I keep most of my spare military police stuff. You can see some helmet covers and stuff. Here's my extra 24 hour gear stuff. A lot of that's from 2015 that I just haven't gone through in a long time, so I need to sit down and do it. Um, and then here's just oddball stuff, early MREs, some duty gear stuff, Rothko belt, used NBC cover, boot covers, pup tent, pup tent parts, L-handle canteen covers, some... Uh, three-piece canteen pieces, Rothko butt pack, helmet bags, um, spare uniform items that I just found in a garbage bag that I had stuffed in my er, uh, shed. This is a M43 field jacket, some older Air Force uniforms, some random BDUs, uh, some RDFs, and then in this giant duffel bag is just loaded with mostly BDUs, it looks like. 
here's my boot tote. Most of these are the uh, DMS boots unissued. Um, here's an, another pair without the notch from 74. Here's a pair with the notch from the 80s. There's some jungle boots. So yeah, mostly DMS boots unissued and jungle boots and that. And then just random uniform items that I had collected over the years. Some of my grandfather's fatigues from the 80s. Some neighbor's uniforms. And then just random gas mask filters. Um, I don't have any of my gas masks down here. But um, I'll try and add that later on. So guys, this is pretty much everything in my military collection. Um, I don't know with how much daylight I have left, but after I get done filming this, this is when I like to go through each, at the end of the summer, go through all my military surplus stuff and figure out what I want to get rid of or what I can sell because I always have people inquiring, even on older videos they are like, oh, you know, I know you said that you already sold everything, but is anything still for sale? And it's like, dude, no. Like, it's in the comment section. Um, I'll show you guys that development that I talked about in my previous videos in this old field. Where the one summer it was just a field, and then the next summer it was a road. And now they actually have houses. And then there's the stadium lights. But yeah, we got houses over here now. And apartment complex. So that's the development on that. Just some random stuff that I thought I'd add in the video. Anyways, guys, so that's going to wrap it up. There really isn't much more that from my collection that's not down here, aside from my field desk, some N NBC suits, um, gas masks, of course. My experimental flak jacket isn't down here. I thought it was, but apparently not. Um, there's a few other body armor pieces that not down here. Uh, my hand axe or hatchet isn't down here. But there really isn't that much else that's not here. On the way, I actually have the actual M69 flak jacket, the one with the Velcro closure. So hopefully I'll be getting that soon. I'm really looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, guys, that's going to wrap it up for 2020's Everything in My Military Collection video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions about anything, just go ahead and let me know. And as always, have a nice day, and thanks for sticking around, and thanks for checking out my channel.